Working from home is no joke, especially when you have little children, especially when they're home with you, and especially during a pandemic when you can't really go places, it's harder to find childcare, it's fine, harder to find places where they can go and you can work at the same time, and it's just all around hard. But I have been doing this for the past six years as a daycare provider in my home and now Just as an online entrepreneur, I was trying to do both and balancing both for five years. So I know a thing or two about trying to work with kids around while you're working from home. So I thought I would share my favorite top 13 tips when it comes to working from home for those of you who need some help in this area, because trust me, I've learned from experience, but I did not have an easy time most of the time. I still have a hard time a lot of the time, but here are 13 tips that can make it a little bit easier for you. Glue. It's messy. It's sticky. It gets everywhere, but it's also really useful. Just like the glue that we need to put together the pieces of our life as busy working moms. We have after school activities, we have homework, we have cleaning, we have laundry, and you know, we want to spend time with our kids as well in the process and maybe even have some time for ourselves. This podcast is for the busy moms out there who are balancing work, life, and everything in between. And we all know that in between encompasses a lot of things. If you're a mom who wants to do the best in all areas of life, but still have time for yourself, this podcast is for you. I love to interview other moms and find out what works for them get ideas from them, get inspired by them and learn, you know, we're all in this together. But I also like to share my own tips, tricks, struggles, triumphs, and share it all with you. So grab a load of laundry, lock yourself in the bathroom, go for a walk, do whatever you got to do. But I am just so glad you're here. Hey, glue sticks. Welcome back to another work life glue podcast episode. It is episode 25. I have made it through a quarter of a hundred episodes. I'm really excited and I just love this podcast. I love getting to connect connect with you guys. And if you don't know, I have also started posting video versions of this podcast on YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, hi, you already can see me. If you're listening to the audio version and you like listening to the audio version, you can definitely keep listening on a podcast app and just listen to the audio, or you can definitely just listen to the audio on the YouTube version. But if you want to be able to see my face and just see my mannerisms and stuff like that and watch me talk, you can definitely go over to YouTube and do that. So I like to say, if you like my face, you can watch on YouTube. If you don't like my face or just don't want to see my face and just want to listen, you can listen on a podcast app. The choice is yours, but both have the same exact content. So let's talk work at home mom tips. I know this is a big topic, especially the past year because of the pandemic. And I know so many of us work in various ways. Some of us are employees and we have employers and maybe we just have online work to do. Maybe we have physical work we have to do at home. Maybe we're entrepreneurs and we're creating things or maybe we're doing stuff online on the computer, doing Zoom calls, things like that. Everybody has a different job. So I can't really speak to exactly what will work for every single person, but I have come up with 13 tips that have really worked for me the past six years as I have juggled working as a daycare provider in my home and trying to balance caring for up to 10 kids uh, under the age of five plus my own kids needing me in that time. And they are included in the 10 kids, but just how that worked with running a business, having to set up interviews after hours, keep the house clean, do all of the business side tasks for daycare while I'm home with a bunch of kids. How did I do that? I have the tips for you. Plus, I was also running this online business, Work Life Glue, during that time in the nooks and crannies of my day, which I will talk about. And now that is my job. And I'm also going to start homeschooling this fall. And I'm only able to do that because I have set up a lot of systems and I have come up with a lot of different techniques and things that work for me that I know will work for you. So let's just jump right into the tips. Tip number one, I think this is the most important. I think most moms would say that their number one role is the role of mom. You know, maybe wife comes first or if you have a Christian faith or a faith in something, you would say that is first, then your spouse, then your kids. But no matter what, when you're thinking of working and being a mom, 
being a mom is the most important thing. Yes, obviously, a lot of us need to make money. We find our jobs very rewarding or important in lots of ways, but being a mom is super duper important. So tip number one is to really make sure you're setting up time for your kids during your day. When you work from home, it is so easy to try to brush your kids off, to get annoyed with them because they're interrupting you and to just feel like they're getting in the way of your work. But really, sometimes we have to look at it a different way. Our work is getting in the way of our kids. So I think it's super important before we jump into any tips of being more productive or finding more time in your day or things like that, that we really look at our day and find times to really focus on our kids, to fill up their cups so that they are happy, that we're happy, and then we have more time and capacity to get our work done. So this does not mean scheduling out hours and hours of one-on-one time with each of your kids. That is not realistic, especially if you have multiple kids and you're working. You can't spend hours and hours on each child. But I know a lot of the books I have read talk about the importance of caregiving time. So giving your kids a bath, meal times, changing diapers or potty training, things like that where you have to be focused on them, you have to be helping them with these things. Really look at those times to connect with your kids. Also laying down for nap, laying down for bed, take that time to really give your undivided attention to feed into them, to ask them about their day, to be silly, to tell them you love them, tell them how proud you are of them, ask them about their day and just be present with them. Those little moments throughout the day add up. And the more we can be present with them in those moments, the more they're going to feel heard. They're going to act out less and they're not going to need as much extra attention throughout the day. Now, do I think it's important to also build in extra time throughout the day when you can? Of course. But if you are really strapped for time, just focus on those caregiving times to focus 100% on your kids during those times. We love to read during meals, especially breakfast and snack. So you could do that. We like to ask about their day at the end of the day, ask questions and things like that to really connect with them. And then bedtime for us is super important. We take turns laying each girl down every night, and that is our time to just really feed into them, to talk with them. They pour out their hearts to us often. We're silly. We cuddle. We kiss. We just build in that bonding time during a task that we already have to do with them, and it's kind of performing double duty for us. And then they're not as likely to act out during other times for attention because we are giving them that attention that they need. Tip number two is to eat that frog. I think a lot of us have heard that saying to eat the frog. You do that thing that you need to do for your work first because that is the most important thing. For me with my work life glue business, videos and podcast episodes are like the main thing that keep my business running. And so those are the most important thing. Those are the frog that I have to eat. And I think it's really important if you are able to to do those things right away. So I wake up at 4 a.m. I'm not saying everybody needs to wake up at 4 a.m., but if you can wake up early before your kids get up and do that thing that you need to do for your business, for your job, if you're able to, if you don't have set hours, do that thing right away, get it over with so that once your kids are awake, you know, if the day gets kind of derailed, you at least got those most important things done. Now, I try to do a lot more than just edit videos and edit podcast episodes, but those are the things that I do right away in the morning when I wake up. They don't require a ton of brain power, which is great because it's early and I haven't had my full cup of coffee yet, but they also are the things that have to get done, that have deadlines that I need to do to keep my business running. And the other things are extra that I can always get to later if the day gets derailed and kind of move around but I like to do the things that are the most important right away so that I don't get angry at my kids if they interrupt me or things like that later on in the day because I already got the most important things done first. Tip number three is to make rest time or nap time essential. Now, I know kids eventually grow out of their nap, which is normal, but I, you know, try to get my kids to nap as long as possible. Both of my girls, older girls so far, have napped at least till age four, My younger one is still napping. She's three and a half, and I'm sure that's going to keep going because she definitely needs it. She's a very active kid. My oldest daughter napped until she was five, and then that slowly trickled out. And about that time, when they're about that age, I think they're a lot better about being quiet during quiet time. We started quiet time with our oldest in her room for an hour, and then she could come out and play. 
And now I don't make her go to her room because she's so good at staying quiet. She finds activities to do on her own. But if your kid obviously is being loud during that time, definitely set up rules, have parameters around it, boundaries, make them stay in the room or a certain part of the house or give them certain activities they need to do. But I think one to two hours of quiet time during the day is not too much when they're actively playing and and doing things. We even let our oldest daughter go outside now and play in the nicer weather. I can still, you know, see her and keep an eye on her, but she is old enough now to play on her own and kind of do her own thing, which is really, really nice. And I think it's so important for her. She actually is an introvert. And so I think it's really good for her to have that time set up. But even for an extrovert, when you're with people all day, it's good to just have some time to explore, to think, to have that quiet peace of mind. And so I just think it's really important to set up that time so that you can really focus on your work and your child is getting a break. It's a win-win for both. You don't look at it like my kid needs to play so I can work and I'm making them play and it's not a really good thing for them, but I just need them to be distracted. No, play is so good for our kids, no matter what age they are. Maybe they'll read during that time. Maybe they'll work on some schoolwork or something like that so that they can be learning or just play, which is also great. And then you can really have that focus time to work. There's no way I could homeschool and not have an income. So it's super important that my kids, once they are out of the nap phase, learn to play on their own and not distract me and need me every two seconds because I need that time to work. And I don't think that's selfish at all. I think it's good for all of us. Piggybacking off of that, tip number four is to be smart about screen time. I know a lot of us with the pandemic were using screens a lot more often and there's no shame in that. That was a crisis, but it's been a year now and we just really need to be strategic about screen time. We definitely use screens in our house. And if you you know, need screens or like screens or want to integrate them in your house. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Our kids are going to need to be technologically savvy as they get older, but just be really smart about it. So you're not ending up feeling guilty about it and using them as a crutch. So we are really strategic. I will sometimes use them before lunch as my normal break where I'm really tired and just kind of done being mom for a little bit. And so they can watch a show while I make a quick lunch for everybody. And then I also use them after nap time or rest time. So nap rest is about an hour and a half from the time that I lay the little ones down until they get up. And then I use screens for about 45 minutes to an hour to finish up my work. Sometimes I'll work out and get it in some me time for myself to focus on my body and focus on my mind and things like that while they use screens. So they're not getting a ton of screen time every day, but it's really focused. And then to take it a step further, we actually got Osmo, which is not sponsored, but I bought this It's basically the set that you can use. You can add it onto your iPad or your Kindle Fire. And it basically you put it over your, it's a mirror you put over your camera on your tablet and then you manipulate different items down on the table in front of you, in front of your tablet. And then it kind of can see what you're doing through the camera. And it's just really, really cool. It's got so many learning games. So I let my girls do that during their screen time you know, during that end of rest time, end of nap time, 45 minutes to an hour. And they know they can't have that until two o'clock and then they can have that time. And it's just great because they're learning, they're having fun, they're getting their screen time, but they're also like focused on something so I can still finish up my work or do my workout or journal or read or just do something for myself. And I'm using the screen time strategically so I'm not just handing them a tablet throughout the day trying to get them to leave me alone. I'm very strategic about when I'm using it. There's lots of boundaries and then I never have to feel guilty about it because it's really well thought out and not something that I'm using as a crutch. It's something that I'm using for my kids and also for me. Tip number five, this works really well if you have freedom in your schedule as an employee or if you are an entrepreneur. If there are certain tasks that you have to do, but it doesn't matter exactly when you do them, this tip is for you. So I think it's really important and really helpful to kind of assign different tasks to different days of the week. Now, this can ebb and flow, but I think for planning purposes, it just takes a lot of the 
the mind work out of it, the planning, if you just set up like on Mondays, I will do this task. On Tuesdays, I'll do this type of task. Wednesdays, I do this type of task. Thursday is kind of my open day. I can do whatever I need to catch up on. And Fridays, I do this task. So depending on your job, it really will depend on what those tasks are. But let's say you run a business and you need to do social media posts. Maybe every Monday you take all the photos or do all the videos for your social media posts. Tuesdays, you respond to emails and you do your meetings. Wednesdays, you fill in the blank, create products or whatever. And then Thursdays, you catch up. And then Fridays, you get stuff in order for such and such thing. I don't know. It just depends on your job. But I just think it's really helpful to have certain tasks assigned to certain days so that when you go to plan every week, you're not having to start completely fresh every single week and think, okay, what am I going to do this? When I'm going to do that? If you have the same tasks that you do pretty much every week, assign them to a certain day of the week and it's going to really help you when it comes to planning. It's going to save you time and it's going to just really get you really focused and know what's going on every single day. Tip number six is to do household tasks when your kids are awake. I know it is a lot easier to do household tasks like laundry, cleaning, meal planning, all that kind of stuff, cooking, prepping your food. All that stuff is a lot easier to do when our kids aren't around, but it's cutting into your work time. Plus, I think it's really important that our kids see us doing these things and also learn to help us with these things. I actually just did a video on YouTube all about my cleaning tips for those who hate cleaning. And I talk about bribing your kids, aka training, teaching, whatever you want to call it. But I think it's really important for our kids to help as well. But I think it's really important that we try to do as much of that stuff while our kids are awake. So we're saving the times when they're asleep for work and for ourselves. We can't pour from an empty cup. So it's important that we give time to ourselves, which we can't always do when they're awake. And work, I think, is really important to try to do as much of it when they're asleep so that we're focusing only on our home and our children when they're awake so that we can really give them that quality time. Of course, you might have to do a little work while they're awake and maybe you have a job where you just have to. But if we can try to use those quiet times and that sleep time for the most important tasks that don't involve our children, I think that's really beneficial for the whole family. Tip number seven, if possible, get help. I think it's so important if you are able to get some help. I know for me, I will never claim to do it all. My mom helps watch my um, two, my middle daughter and my oldest daughter if she's not at school. She helps watch them one time a week for a few hours. I keep the baby for now, but it's so helpful for me to do videos, podcast episodes, Um, you know, all kinds of stuff I'm working on behind the scenes. It's so much easier to do when I don't have all my kids here. I can actually do a a few hours extra of work that my baby is sleeping for her morning nap. My other ones aren't here, so I can use that time to work. And it's just so helpful to have someone care for my kids during that time. Now, you may have to find daycare. You might trade with a friend. You might you know, go to the gym and work out for an hour and use the childcare and then use the second hour you might get for work, something like that. Be creative about it. But I don't think there's anything wrong with getting help now and then. And it can really just help you get that break you need to focus on your work so you can focus more on your kids when they're around. And it might allow them to have special time with somebody else that they love or be around other kids and socializing, which is never a bad thing. Tip number eight is to batch whenever possible. And I use this for both work and for home. And it helps me with my work um, when I'm batching stuff for home. So things you can batch for work, you know, is really going to depend on what job you have. For me, like I was saying earlier, like Instagram posts, videos, podcast episodes, taking photos, emails. I batch out all of my Facebook group posts for my Facebook group. I do that once a month and I get them all ready for the whole month. And it's just so nice to just do it all in one sitting. So I'm in that mindset, bam, 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 bam. I knock it all out and then I'm done and I can focus on something else next. And I just think it's a wonderful tool. 
Email is another great thing. Most businesses or jobs require email. So trying to batch that instead of doing it in little spurts throughout the day, it's just really a time suck when you do it that way. And then with motherhood and homemaking, there's so many things you can batch. You can batch cook. So I like to do this with breakfast. I've talked about this a few times, but once every week on the weekend, I will batch cook one type of breakfast item. So one week I'll do muffins. The next week I'll do pancakes. The next week I'll do waffles. The next week I'll do egg bites or whatever it is. And I'm batching that one recipe. I'm cooking extra of it in that one time and it makes enough food for the whole month. And that really saves me time and energy in the mornings. I love it. You can batch cook meat. You can batch cook freezer meals, what have you. There's so many ways to batch cook. You can batch plan out your week. You can batch set up appointments. If you hate making appointments, you can just set up a bunch of appointments at one time, your dentist, your vision, your well child visits, all that kind of stuff. You can set them up for the whole year, perhaps even. There are so many things you can batch. If you take a second to think about, okay, what are some things that I can do a whole bunch of at one time that will really save me time because I won't have to start and stop all these different activities throughout the week. I can do a bunch of them at one time and that will help you both as a working person and as a mom. Tip number nine, if you don't batch cook your suppers, prep your suppers during lunch. So if you're already home and you're cooking for yourself or you're whipping up something for yourself and your kids perhaps during lunchtime, Try to also prep your supper at that time. I just find it really helps me eat healthier, spend less time in the kitchen, and just have a smoother night when we prep our supper during lunch. And obviously, it helps to know what you're having. So if you don't meal plan, that's another great thing is to plan your suppers at lunch um, if you don't have a plan already and then get it prepped so it's all ready to go and easy to cook at dinner time. Tip number 10, I think with any job, it is so important to also be learning throughout the process. So if you're an entrepreneur, you might be learning about marketing or learning about your specific industry. You might be learning tips for social media. If you have a job, let's say in the nursing field, it's important to be, you know, staying on top of what's going on, different articles and things like that. So I think it's really great to keep learning. And if you can, I love to learn in a multitasking fashion. So what I mean by this is I listen to things often while I am doing kind of like mindless tasks. So cleaning, cooking, walking, and showering are all times that I like to learn. And I do this through podcast episodes, audio books, YouTube videos I will listen to a lot and it's just so helpful to multitask when I'm doing something that I don't really need to be focused on 100%. I can also be learning so I don't have to take up precious time when I could be working to learn. I can learn while I'm doing things that don't require a lot of me and I'm also not taking up time when I could be focused on my kids because during those times, I'm usually not focused on them anyway. I also do this while I'm driving. Once a week, we will go get groceries and things. And we spend a lot of the time in the car because we are doing a lot of pickups because we're trying not to go into a lot of places because of the pandemic. So usually we will go into Target because there's certain things I need to be able to see. And then if my kids are good at Target, then I will let them watch like an educational video, like a leapfrog video in the car. And then I put the audio to the back of the van so that they're hearing that. And then I will play a podcast or something on my phone so I can be listening to something. And it kind of fills my cup up. It's my little me time while we're going to pick up at different stores. And then they get to have some fun screen time, but it's also educational. And it's kind of killing two or three birds with one stone while we're just driving mindlessly and I get to learn and they get to learn as well. Tip number 11 is to work on independent play. I know this is something I've really struggled with. It's a huge thing I advocate for, but it can be really hard to get your kids to play independently, especially when they're with you all the time. A lot of times they become more dependent on you or they try to ask you questions or get you to help with things all the time. So there are lots of ways to get your kids to be more independent players, but I think just I have found setting up things for them to do is really helpful. Maybe setting it up in a way that they're not used to. I call this a strew. Some people call it an invitation to play, but you can just take some different things that you have, different toys and things like that, and set them up for them. 
and it kind of invites them to play or maybe set up a sensory type of play for them if you need to get some work done, like answer some emails or make a call while they're awake. Just having something that's really going to draw them in and entice them to play can be really good. And just working on smaller increments and building onto that. So maybe they play by themselves for five minutes and they get like a little sticker or a little piece of candy or what have you, or they get to cuddle and read a book with you. And then you go for 10 minutes the next day and then 15 minutes and you build up to longer periods of time where they can play independently. I find my kids play really well independently when we're outside. So if you can work while you're outside, if the weather is nice, obviously, and get some work done and they can play and you're outside. So it feels good and you're getting some fresh air at the same time. That can be a really good way to have them play independently and not need you every second, but you're still able to get some work done while they're awake if if you need to. Tip number 12, the best, one of the best tips for a working mom of any type, but especially if you work from home and you don't have those clear boundaries of when you're at work and when you're at home, is to schedule non-work time. So whether that be an everyday thing, like after 7 p.m. you don't work or, you know, from three to four, you have some me time and you don't work or whatever it is. I think it's really important to schedule non-work time. Maybe every weekend you take off or a day of the weekend you don't work. I think it's so important to have those boundaries for your kids to see, okay, mom is not working right now. She is just being mom. She's just being herself. And I don't have to worry about work kind of cutting into our time. I think it's so important if that means you need to turn off your phone or if you need to actually say, okay, work is done. I'm ready to focus on you. I actually um, had a tip from a therapist before um, when we were working with one of our daughters on behaviors and she had a hard time during daycare of sharing me. Um, They had recommended, I actually have a sign that says mom is working. And on the other side, it said mom is mom. And we would switch that every day to help my child see, okay, right now I am just mom and you can use me and need me, ask for whatever you need. And I am here for you. But when mom is working, there are other kids during daycare that may need me and I can't always focus just on you. And that was just a really great visual thing for my kid to see that, you know, I am mom, but I also work and I can't just solely be there for you every second of every day. Was that hard? Yes. And it's kind of a sad thing, but at the same time, like if I worked outside the home, she wouldn't see me at all during those hours. So I had to look at it a little bit differently and just remind myself and remind her that, You know, we're lucky that I get to work and be with you, but, you know, that also comes with me not being able to fully focus on you every second that you need me when I am working. So if you need to make a visual thing like that so that your child learns, okay, mom is done. Like I can come to her. I can ask her to read me a book now or whatever when she is not working. That can be really, really helpful for our kids and also really helpful for ourselves to have those boundaries. And then last but not least, if you have a partner or a spouse, I think it's really helpful to trade off with one another. So what we do, um, my husband loves to work out and he loves to go to the gym, which is his thing for himself that he does outside of work um, for himself. And he you know, I watch our girls while he does that. He either goes really early in the morning or he will go after work and I will be, you know, single mom in that instance where he is not there to help me, but he is also not working. So something we also do is that I get a free hour most days, if possible, where I can choose to do whatever I want. I often will choose to work, but I can also use that time to work out. I can go for a walk. I can go for a drive. I can do whatever I want. And he is watching the kids. So we trade off. He gets a free hour many days. And then I get a free hour many days where one of us is on, you know, solo parent duty, if that makes sense. And if you want to use that time for working, great, do it. But if you want to use that time to get more time for yourself, because you are working really hard and trying to be a mom and all of the things that come along with that, that's definitely okay too. Maybe you'll take a bath during that time. Maybe you'll call a friend during that time. You'll go and get your nails done, whatever it is. Um, just use that time in the best way. And maybe you'll do it a different way every time. But I think it's a great thing that we don't have to be as a family all the time. I think it's okay for, 
you know, especially us moms, when we are working from home, if our kids are with us, you know, they're with us all the time. It's okay if they have an hour away from us. Even if you're working outside the home and listening to this, it's okay to spend an hour on yourself or doing something for your job when you're not at work and your kids can be with their dad or the other partner. And it's okay for them to not have you every hour that you aren't working. If that makes sense, it's okay to take some time for yourself or to be away from them once in a while. It's totally okay. So I hope you found a tip in here that you found useful. I would love if you would go over to the Work Life Blue Moms Facebook group. If you haven't already joined, definitely join. You just have to answer a few questions and you will be added to the group. And in there, we're always talking about different things, commiserating with each other, sharing triumphs, and just learning from one another. It's a great group. And I also love to post a weekly post for the podcast and we can keep the conversation going there. So if you have any other tips or want to see anybody else's tips for working at home moms and how you survive that and balance everything, make sure you join that group and you can find the post for today's episode and go find the comments there or comment yourself. Thank you guys so much for listening or watching if you're on YouTube Make sure you subscribe either on your favorite podcast app or on YouTube and come back every week for more podcast episodes. I also post a couple extra videos every week on YouTube for different ways that I balance work life and everything in between and create balance that sticks. Sometimes I share organizing videos, decluttering. I've been sharing my homeschool journey over there, as well as tips for moms, different hacks for working moms, different ways to organize your life for both your time management and your home. And then I also like to often post my weekly prep videos, which is just a vlog of my weekend showing you how we balance fun and function. And people seem to really like to see kind of the behind the scenes and see how I get everything done on the weekend. So I hope you guys enjoyed and will become part of the glue stick family if you haven't already and subscribe. And as always, Go get something done. Go love on your kids. Go live your dreams. I'll talk to you soon.